Hey, good morning, boys and girls. I'm uh, a little late on this. I was supposed to do this yesterday. <clears throat> too much, too much tennis, too much other things yesterday. Anyway, I wanted to show you how to do some simple uh, weight painting maps in um, in uh, for your dad's hair that you're bringing in from uh, into Character Creator Three. Uh, dad's hair comes in really good if it's the polygonal hair. I would not, as a rule, recommend fiber mesh hair. You might say, how can I tell the difference? Uh, the fiber mesh hair is the little, first of all, it takes insanely amounts of memory. And secondly, it just doesn't look as full. Uh, it's usually used for the shorter hairstyles. This is some fiber mesh hair here, for example. This, I'll load this in here so you can see the difference. So that's that fiber mesh hair. Uh, it's okay, and in extreme cases, you know, you can use it. But I, I it's just, if you, if you have to have flat hair, obviously, or short hair, that's one of the few things you can <coughs> excuse me, do, but um, polygonal hair is much better. Okay, so the problem with polygonal hair, it comes in great looking, of course, and of course the longer hair looks fantastic. The problem is, without weight maps, it's just going to stay like that. It's going to be very static looking, and as she turns her head, it'll look just like this, which is, which is not realistic at all. So you have to paint your own weight maps. You can't get them from uh, Daz. Daz actually doesn't include, it doesn't even have the concept of that. They have something called G-Force, but that doesn't transfer over, and I'm not sure how, how it would even, but um, anyway, so how do you do it? Well, it, it's, it ranges from the ridiculously easy, well, not ridiculously, but easy, to extremely difficult. In this particular case, it's fairly easy, and I'm, uh, for, because the parts of the hair are broken up very clearly, so... Uh, for example, here's the bangs. So the bangs, on the, those are on the side for those, for those of you that aren't, aren't women. Uh, those are these things hanging down. The bangs. So it's, it's easy to draw weight maps for those because we know that that's what we need to do. So what we can do is we can go into physics, go to weight maps, and then we can actually select the bangs. And you can see here, let me go into the, uh, the UV so you can see. I've already drawn the weight maps for these, but it's it's really simple uh, when the hair is split up like that because it's going to load this up and what it does is it loads in the UVs for all the different parts of the, of the hair. So in this particular case, you can see there's the cap. So that's that cap of the UV. Obviously, you don't need a weight map for that. Uh, probably don't need it for the, the back. I did it for the bangs and, oh, I guess I did it for the back because the back's a ponytail. But here, so here's what I did to draw the weight map. The only difficulty here is you have to know which direction is which. Is as a general rule, the see how these things aren't even here. This is even up here. This is going to be the ends of the hair. So that's just something. But you can always experiment, and if you get it wrong, you just reverse it. So you just you know go in here like this, and you go into your uh, your uh, gradient, and then you drag your gradient down like that, and then you create it. Then you do a select inverse. And edit fill. And this is a you know obviously Adobe, so you can do it in whatever program you want. And then you create your weight map. That's about all it is. I did that for both bangs and the back. Uh, again, that's easy because the parts of the hair are differentiated here, so we know what's what. But I wanted to show you something where it's far more difficult because the process is exactly the same. Just created all the weight maps. So uh, yeah, I created a weight map for the ponytail back there. So this. This works, and I think you've seen the video for that. But let's do, let's do something a little harder. Let's go into this Osher hair, which is a nice, this is actually a style for a guy, okay? This is, this is actually a guy. Guys wear their hair, I guess you can use it for a girl too, but guys wear their hair long. Uh, and I, I did when I was a kid, um, but I'm considerably older now and can't bother to mess with it. So here, here you got the same kind of hair. Okay, so it's kind of nice and... Uh, but but if you just if it was just static like this and didn't move at all as that character moved his head, it would look pretty bad. So we want to add physics. You go to the weight map. So this is the physics tab with the hair selected and the weight map. And you'll notice in this case we only have three things. We have scalp, hair, and hair. What the hell? So let's go load up the uh, UVs for that and take a look at that. So here's what you have. You have the, uh, oh, we should have got rid of the other one. That's the little ponytail. Because the last, we have the scalp, which you don't want. That's that, you rec recognize there's the cap again. So don't want that. So we know we want hair. Well, look at this. What the heck is hair one? And what the heck is hair two? 
you know so so this this is complicated how do we know what hair is where okay well in this particular case what I do is I, I kind of create a guide so I know that these hairs are uh, you know one set of hairs and this is another set of hairs so I'm gonna because you can tell because they're obviously they're that way so I go in and I create a gradient color guide so I'll use this that rainbow okay drag this down like that nice rainbow there and then for these on this side I'm going to do another gradient here and I'll pick a different color combination so I can tell the tell the two apart so this one maybe I'll do this one drag that down okay so now I've got two different color combos here I'm going to go ahead and save that file out just quick export as JPEG uh, I'll just do it in downloads and we'll call it uh, we'll just leave it that that's fine and now when I come back here I'm not going to load it as physics I'm going to go into the texture and go into the hair and I'm going to load that coloration here to see how the hair is colored oh and look at that so you can tell that this yellow and this red here this yellow red here is what's coming down on the outside of that down below here you have this purplish so down here at this edge here we have the edge of those hairs colored got to be a little careful because there's also a little bit of purplish up here but I think that's still the bleed in from this here so so that looks so that gives us a kind of a pattern to match uh, for it and then we can just hit uh, control you know Z to undo what I just did same thing we can check out this hair I think I think this is just the twin hairs uh, yeah see it's the, exactly the same patterns I think what's happened is they've just layered two layers on there so a uh, same again we know that the that that reddish yellow the yellow part down here and then this purplish this purplish down there that's where we want to paint our wave maps okay so we got that so again control see so then we go in and we create that weight map and go in back to Photoshop and knowing that you know we need to do that we can go ahead and do the same thing we can do this piece here and we can go in now to our gradient and select that black white gradient and we know the white needs to come down at the end so we do you know, something with sneeze excuse me something like that oh and then we do it on this side this side I don't think is as critical but we'll do it here too I come down here at the very end because I think it was just at this very back that we had it something like that okay and then we're all set let me go ahead and quick export that JPEG uh, we'll call it Osher hair 2 I actually have done this already so I had Osher hair 1 but anyway that's close enough all right so now we have our maps don't need this anymore and we can apply them here if we want uh, but you can't really see physics here so I actually like to apply them on iClone it doesn't really help to apply your physics maps in character creator because obviously that's not where physics is going on so I go to export yeah excuse me go send character to iClone and then if I come over to iClone I have it on the other side of the screen here up and running and now it's bringing that character over I can't drag it while it's bringing the character over but as soon as it does there we go okay I'll drag it over here get rid of the timeline for now this uh, I have dual monitors obviously so now I have an animation already applied to this character and this is without the weight maps so I'll play it without the weight maps well Let's see it all that started that back in 2005 as as, as can when be. we now, were developing guess, a tool to create a bit, 3d animation say, why is it, to render why is it out bending a little bit around the videos. Well, because it's conforming eventually with the so it grew you know you kind of you kind of like that interesting that's, application that's part of it for most but it's obviously here. not doing that what at the it time really should be doing unless he's just using it on a product on his hair which which he could be you know it's just it's the guy could could have a lot of product but i like a little bit of movement in my hair that's that's just me so so what we're going to do is we're going to go here go back to the beginning here and select the hair just that hair part go up to physics here and we're going to go to activate physics it's going to tell us hey you got to select the material no problem we're going to we're going to load them out i got apps over on this side so we already created those maps so i'm going to click on here 
add in the Osher hair math right there. It takes a little while because it calculates the physics of it while it does that. So uh, it's going to be, you know, working, thinking about it a little bit, not, not excessively long. And sometimes if there's a lot of polygons, it may even give you a warning message that says, oh, you know, you've got way too many. I wouldn't worry about that. Modern machines, actually, I think at 7.3, they've improved that enough so it isn't a huge concern, but it used to be a uh, a real bad thing that they would say, oh, you know, you can't use this because it's got way too many. And I would always use it, and it always worked. So I haven't found that yet, but then again, I haven't done a lot of weight mapping in 7.3, so I don't know if they've changed it or if I just haven't run across it yet. But I, I never worry when that message comes up, and it seems to work just fine. So this will come up. Okay, there we go. So now we got the weight maps. I can already tell you we're going to be adjusting this in a second, but let's look at it as it stands now. So we got physics on this hair. We want to change it to hair because we do want it to hair. Uh, we'll just leave it at the default hair to start with. I'll show you what happens here when we do this. So we always want to be in by frame. Uh, by frame allows the calculations for the hair. And once you've calculated the hair, then you can go ahead and bake it. And I'm sure you guys all know how to do that. You go up here and you go to the, the edit the project settings. You know, and all my all my windows are over on the other side because of the. Uh, so you can go ahead and bake the animation here, and then you can turn off the the, the, uh, the soft cloth, and then that animation will stay while you're doing other stuff. So that's pretty standard. So anyway, so now we'll go here. So well, now you can see it all it started down. back in 2005 because it's going through his when head. When we were developing a tool to stuff. create 3D physics. animation that's the to good render part. Um, we know we have animated physics. videos, we just know that the settings eventually right. it grew okay, into. So that's, uh, that very like interesting application for most of us way here. Too long. Okay, so settings yeah. aren't right, but we have hair physics, so that's good. So we'll, how can we adjust the settings? The first thing we can do is play around with these hair settings a little bit. And if you come down here, you can see where the elasticity and stretch, we don't really want a lot of stretch to his hair, and we don't want uh, much bending to go on. We want this kind of be stiff. Uh, inertia is fine. We can leave inertia. We'll turn down the elasticity. This will help a lot. So as we go through well, here, you'll see it. Oops, it all started back in 2005 <laughs> when we were developing a, a tool to, to create we, 3D we animation. The next, thing. next thing we want to adjust is the actual uh, matte material. So we've got the matte materials. We want to turn down the brightness on this quite a bit. Okay. We don't really need a lot of movement in the hair. We just need enough so that it, it looks a bit uh, like it's not so stiff. So... Once we've drawn the weight maps, and this has taken a while because again it's recalculating as we uh, as we speak, so I'm, I'm just waiting for it to recalculate. Once we've drawn the whoops, and it just disappeared. Okay, let's try it again. Weight map, go down to hair one, and we'll turn down the brightness there as well. We just want a little bit of that movement. Okay, let's see if that now does what we want. Da, da, da. Come on. Takes a while as it thinks about things. Aren't we having fun? And I have a fast machine too. So those of you with a slower machine or maybe a slower graphics card, you have to attempt to have a lot more patience. Okay, well, now we do this and it all started see, back in two thousand five. Movement here. When we were developing a tool much. to create three D animation to, to render um, a little bit animated and, videos. I kind of like this. Eventually, it's kind of about right for this kind of hair. Very interesting style, application but, um, for most of us here. That see what at the time hair for we because ourselves he's didn't even anticipate. Because you know this guy is going to want to keep his hair into uh, some some settings. I might want to go back and adjust the weight map settings now that I've adjusted the. Uh... Let's see how this looks here. Come on, bend forward. I know you got to bend forward. There we go. Okay, so there. It's forward. That's not bad. That's not bad. I think I would still adjust some of these weight settings here, so I might go back and, and make sure this is maybe a little wavy there. Adjust those, see if the, how that works. Well... Yeah, a little bit better. It all started back go. in 2005. That might be it. That's, when we were developing it. a tool to create 3D animation yep. Yep. to just render just um, the right amount animated so he still videos has some, 
some style of the Eventually, hair, but enough so that the hair doesn't look into like a it's uh, very interesting application for most So you got to play around with it a little bit. You save, you, then you save your the hair time, out. Then what you do is when you, when you get the settings exactly the way you want them, and I'm not saying this is exactly the way I want it, but when you get it ex exactly the way you want it, make sure you select the whole avatar, and then you want to go back here, and you want to go to Edit in, Char cre uh, edit in Character Creator. And why do I want to do that? Well, the reason for that is that this is the place that you want to save it with all the weight map settings so that the next time when you load it in on your character, it'll have all those weight maps and it'll have all the settings. So now I can go here, select the hair, just the hair only, and go. And so I've already saved this once, but this is what I would do. I would go in and save it there, replace it. And now this hair now has all the, the weight maps. If it goes in and has all the settings, it also has the settings for those weight maps just like we did in iCloud. So when we apply it to our next character, it's all set. So hopefully that explained everything you need to do about weight maps. The, the other time that this won't work, sometimes you'll try coloring like I did, and the coloration is just such, <clears throat> excuse me, that you just can't get it weight map properly. Uh, I have one more technique for that if that happens, but let me know what, what you're doing. If you have any problems, tell me the specific hair. We'll see if we can do that in a tutorial. Otherwise, I hope this helps. Talk to you later.